Hey gang, welcome back to the big board. Uh, I may have just recently posted a video regarding the 18th of December update and I hadn't as yet moved 12th Panzer, uh, sorry, 12th SS. And so, you know, the board was a little cluttered and a little messy and it's still cluttered and messy, but I uh, was expressing my concerns about uh, snafu rolls and modifiers and stuff like that. And the, the more I'm getting into this game, I'm certainly starting to understand it better and certainly uh, appreciating some of the nuance. <clears throat> uh, there's a, a, an interesting combination of new terminology and uh, actions being uh, an action that you might call an overrun uh, being called something different and uh, a fire attack being called something different and the, this combination of terminology, rules, mechanics and uh, this whole uh, entirely new, highly integrated uh, command and supply thing is making this game um, on the surface it seems quite simple to play but at a deeper level it is actually very, very hard, uh, I think, to play. So I wanted to just have a look at a couple of things. Uh, you know, at the start of the scenario over here, we have uh, the 277th, and then I think uh, 12th SS was uh, back over here somewhere. And then you've got uh, these guys over here, another formation there, yeah, I forget the name, uh, the 326th uh, uh, Fox Grenadier. And then here we had uh, first Panzer coming, uh, starting, or Piper starting over here. First Panzer coming onto the board, I believe it was. Uh, 150th comes on, then you've got uh, 12th uh, Volks Grenadier. And so uh, three or four formations that really are oriented towards using this road. And one of the, uh, you know, as I mentioned in this earlier video that I've encouraged you to go have a listen to because uh, I think it went into some detail, I'm not sure. It was uh, a week ago that I recorded it and I haven't really done much else since then. I've done one, two, three, four, five, six activations since then. Uh, for me, this is not a game I can just play a couple of activations and then come back to yet. I don't yet have the depth of understanding of, on the game to... Uh, be able to step up, play a, turn, a full turn or part of a turn and then walk away. You, I really have to invest time and play a, a significant number of activations before I get, you know, before uh, I can walk away again. Otherwise, uh, I spend a lot of time relearning things, it seems. So, they had this crowded area here and what that's in effect doing is... Uh, uh, mandating a minimum of a minus three on the snafu roll, which means that you, in order to pass the snafu roll, I think you need a six, is it a six? Yeah, no, it's a seven or better. Uh, and on the 18th, you get a bonus one for the Germans, so really you only need a six. But uh, I've got to deal with uh, a minus three on that, so really what I need is a, you know, uh, a nine. Uh, so now I've got to roll a 9 on 2d6. Uh, that does not take into account if I've moved a combat train or if I have fatigue, which would be additional penalties as well. And the reason why there's three, uh, generally speaking, there's all, nearly always going to be three uh, penalty points taken away here uh, on your DRM, is because you're nearly always going to have uh, crossed uh, streams. You're nearly always going to have mixed formations. And you're nearly always going to have, uh, uh, what's, that? what's that third thing, uh, coordination. Uh, because it's almost impossible for units to move up the road and not pass over another unit. Uh, it's also almost impossible not to have an HQ be within two hexes of another uh, formation as you, as you move up. You're nearly always, you're, every other turn or so, you're going to have to move the, um, the combat trains, uh, which is going to pop them to ghost mode. So it's a, it's a great way to represent the logjam of uh, partial movement. Uh, I found here, for instance, with the 12th SS, uh, I had to, uh, I was trying to you know, clear the road a little bit. 
and uh, trying to clear things up for, for Piper, but it's probably not going to happen. I've still got uh, you know, some, some stuff going on here that's going to cause uh, mixed formations because they're going to have to count uh, command radiuses. Uh, command radiuses are going to cross here. It's so very, very difficult. Um, it took me two partial movements to get to here. Uh, I was lucky enough to pass those, uh, uh, get a partial snafu result, whereas the first division here failed twice uh, to, to get their roll. Uh, I've got 14th Cav stuck here. They failed. The, uh, well, actually, they haven't gone yet. Who, who failed? Yeah, 82nd Airborne failed. Uh, very first activation right over there. Right over here, they failed their uh, their activation, so they they did not move this turn, and they aren't even uh, that they aren't even blocked or anything like that. They just rolled uh, badly, um, and then there's this uh, curious situation which I'm trying to get uh, a clarification on with the uh, with the rules lawyers. Uh, here I've got 14th Cavs headquarters, and all of these. 14th Cav units, there's not very many of them, just a handful here, I think. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, while they are pretty much surrounded, they don't have a line of supply. The HQ is MSR blocked, uh, main supply route blocked by this unit and by this unit, uh, if they were trying to get around to a, a place where they could um, uh, track back to a, a supply source. So there they are MSR blocked, which is really going to negatively impact, and so is this CCB 9th Armour, uh, that's going to negatively impact their, uh, their snafu roll. But here's the interesting thing. Uh, when, I, when I activate those guys and move them and then check for isolation, they're not going to be isolated because they're with their, they have a safe path to... The headquarters, uh, as far as I can tell, they do not suffer any uh, attrition losses because this HQ, they all have their in command range and they have a safe path, unless there's a minimum uh, distance for safe path for these guys, uh, they're, they're all gonna be fine. Now, if this HQ was, let's say he was here on the road and there was no safe path because there was a zone of control blocking somewhere. Uh, let's say, for instance, he was here, just down here, and there was no safe path. These these guys would suffer attrition, and in fact, they would uh, most likely all come off the board uh, because they would have no safe path and be out of uh, command radius. Uh, actually, the plate wouldn't be out of command radius. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they'd probably be okay. So, well, they'd at least lose two, uh, um, one or two steps. So that's a curious thing. Uh, you know, it, it, it almost makes me think that over here, I should have advanced the 106th Infantry's headquarters up into here, and these guys would have just sat here the entire time, but instead they're going to retreat away. Uh, so I'm a little confused about that, and I don't know how to handle that. I've got a, I'm still waiting on uh, an answer on BGG. But... Probably by the time you see that, I will uh, have resolved it. All right, uh, I'm I'm having a bit of a tough time with this system. I want to like it. I I think the combat is interesting, but when I look at this situation and I look at the just the massive amounts of forces that are coming on, that that this is not all units. It, there's a um, they have uh, strength markers underneath them step markers underneath them but I look at all I look at all this stuff and if we want to uh, if I can bounce these guys out of Melmady or Melmady here uh, there is no way this small force is going to be able to uh, push mu much up here I could literally just build a row of 4D with these this with one division on this road and then one division on this road and block this trail to get there's a, a VP location here and there's a couple others back here but same deal right I could just line up units along this road and let them attack and bounce me out when it comes to my turn to activate I think I can just I can move the guys back in and maybe uh, attack attack them one thing I think you can do as the as the allies is just 
you know, willfully attack with the tanks, regardless of uh, whether you take a loss or not, and and and, and wear out the uh, the German armor, which is what I'm trying to do, which is why I pushed the seventh armored up so aggressively. That's a so there's some stuff here that I'm not sure about yet. I'm still not sure about the step concept uh, that the unit finds a full effect when necessary, whether it's got one step or six. Um, lots of different arguments for for and against those things. But anyway, I'm going to probably pause on the reporting of this uh, gameplay for the time being, I think, unless there's an uh, interest in it. There's lots and lots of other uh, bloggers and writers and guys posting on Board Game Geek and Consume World and, of course, on YouTube. So I would encourage you to go check them out. I I'm just going to mess around with the game a little bit and continue playing uh, for a little while anyway and see what happens. But uh, I don't know that uh, anyone's going to get a lot of value out of, uh, out of this exercise that I've got going here. I feel like I may have played it entirely wrong. I don't know. But it would seem to me as, as, as an opportunity came to the Germans to exploit here that they would put more force in and try and expand the wedge and open, open the gates to move towards Melmody and Stavlot and uh, Spa as uh, as victory condition uh, acquisition opportunities versus versus you know oh well I I got to have one division on this road and one division on that road and in actual fact with the combat trends you cannot avoid uh, uh, the the, uh, the the negative the negative uh, DRM uh, because there's only two two or three roads in fact there's only two roads to go back uh, and until I get rid of this formation here which is not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, I don't know, man. Interesting, challenging, that's good, but it just might be a little bit too grindy for my uh, for my taste. Uh, I'm gonna keep at it for a little while longer. We'll see what happens. If you guys got thoughts or comments, if, you, if you're playing, uh, I'd be happy to hear what you got to say about the game. I'm looking forward to other folks uh, posting about this so that I can, uh, see some video on it and see how they're playing. I'm not getting as much as I hoped I would out of the uh, written AARs. Uh, you know, it's, it's awkward to follow those on Board Game Geek across, you know, 20 posts or whatever. All right, talk to you soon. Ciao.